Hi everybody, I'm John Pulo for Famous Smoke Shop. One of the things that we don't really get to understand until we've really talked to somebody in the cigar industry is that it's an industry built on families that not only goes back by a number of particular years, but by generations. And this is something that Lisette Perez Carrillo knows very well. We've invited her here today to talk a little about this because Lisette, you, know, you and I were talking before, it's not just a matter of a couple of years here or, but we're talking about different countries, different generations, grandfathers, great grandfathers. Mm -hmm. So we're wondering today, what's that been like for you and for like you to you working with your brother together and taking over as the next generation in the cigar industry from for, for EPC cigars? Well, I think that I, something that's very important is that cigars is everything I know. And this is partly because of what you said. This goes back to my great-grandfather in Cuba, to my grandfather in Cuba, who then moved to Miami and started his own small factory on, on 8th Street in Little Havana. And um, growing up next to my father, who um, you know had his moments where he wanted to be a drummer and do certain things like go to New York, and you mm -hmm. know, at the end of the day, he came back to his roots. And I did the same thing. I went to New York, you know, went to law school, practiced there for a while, and at the end came back to my roots. And I think that something um, that is very important in, in my life is having grown up in a factory on 8th Street, that same factory that my grandfather started. You know, grew and grew and grew to the point where we had half the block. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I sometimes have expressions, for example, of, um, I'll be speaking and then say something in Spanish that is reminiscent of my time at the factory and the way that the cigar rollers would speak. And some of my friends are like, how do you even know that word? And it's just all part of everything that I grew up with. And they'd read the paper just as they would in Cuba. All of these things, I'm so blessed to have been able to experience all of that and to learn so much from my dad. And I spent some time with my grandfather, but he passed away when I was very young. And I remember standing there with my dad and, you know, he'd look at the tobacco and he'd teach me and I'm talking about it at a very early age. So, you know, I'd go there after school when the first Apple computer, you know, came into the office, I was the one programming the customer list. Mm -hmm. And I was probably 11 years old at that point or 10. So it's something that it's just what I know. You know, so mm -hmm. I, like I said, we all try different things. My brother tried consulting and we all come back to the beginning. So, so it's something very special in our family. So you're drawn back to basically what you can call home. Yes, and, that's uh, the best know, way to put it. Uh, 11 years old, programming the customer list and your brother being out. So tell me then, I guess, a little bit about what it's like now where as, as being as prominent mm -hmm. as you and your brother both mm -hmm. are in the cigar industry yes. now, how do you take that kind of a role and lead well, with the industry? Well, you know, my forward? father likes to hold our hand a lot, you know, so that's been one of the challenges, mm -hmm. uh, you know, coming up with ideas and the changes in the industry, you know, that have happened mm -hmm. since the beginning. It's like he says, I've been doing this 45 years, I know best, you know, like just anything new that we might want to come up with, just even marketing, things as simple as Facebook, you know, my mm -hmm. dad, you know, he's on Twitter. So if you haven't reached out to him on Twitter, you should, because he <laughs> loves to be on Twitter. We are followers. Yes. So, and that's actually him responding. You know, it's not like we, really? it's not like right. it's passed on to anyone else. So it's all of these new ideas that with changing times, you know, and, and, and I guess it's his getting adjusted to it, you know, and then us learning it at a different level. Because obviously when we're children, you know, mm. and growing up, it's, it's always daddy telling us, you know, do this, do that. And right. now it's kind of like a, an interesting um, combination. Sometimes some arguments, sometimes a lot of fun. For as, for as much as maybe the average cigar smoker doesn't realize, sure, there are some small manufacturers, sure, there are some large manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And sure, there are, you know, they seem to think it's this giant economy of scale that they're thinking, you know, so cigars is all, you know, giant companies that are involved. But really, once you dig beneath the surface, you see that for as large as these companies might be, or for as much business as these companies might do, a lot of times it's just a small family, mm -hmm. just That's atmosphere right. wise, actual members of the family right. who are working together. Right. So, how, I guess, how do you? How do you balance the thought of being so big in an industry with so small mm -hmm. a group of tight-knit people? Right. What's that like? Right. Well, I think, it, you know, having a father that um, I admire very much um, in the sense that he made it um, a great success, uh, you know, with La Gloria Cubana and 
his own blending, you know, where mm -hmm. he, he started with his father and then it progressed and he started tweaking it a little bit and a little bit till it got to him. And uh, I think that this was the first opportunity that he had to really just stand on his own because he had his time with General. Mm -hmm. So he's standing on his own with his two kids there by his side. And I think that that is something that is the beginning of the story. For us here in Ipica Rio, yes, it's a huge history getting to that point, mm -hmm. but it still stands with him now. And I think that, you know, everything um, around this is, is what I guess is at his, at his core in the sense that he's the one at the factory, he's the one blending, he's the one going to Nicaragua and Ecuador, Mexico, wherever he has to be. Mm -hmm. He is, I guess, the hardest working person in this company. Mm -hmm. And that's something, you know, to be said. And I guess that from that, you know, we are all inspired to push ourselves even further. And just, just the other day, I was speaking to someone who, um, who made a comment to me. They said, wow, you know, one of our, our salespersons was really happy that you called him about, you know, whatever that matter was. And I mm -hmm. think to myself, but, but what's the big deal that I called him? What, what right. is the big deal? Oh, because the family and the family. I said, no, we're all here together. We're all here doing this together. Like without you guys, what, what are we? And I think that that's something that, you know, my father's always taught me. And I think that um, in the end, yeah, it's just us, you know, and a lot of times mm -hmm. people might walk in the office and just be like, oh, there's Ernesto, you know, and there's Lisa, and mm -hmm. there's Ernesto. And it's, it's really like that. And we'll sit down and sit in our lounge and have a cigar with, you know, with even a fan that might just stop by to say hi, you know, nice. and surprised. Wow, Ernesto's here. Yes, right. he is. Yes. It's an industry like no other, the cigar industry with Lisette Perez Carrillo.